Hi, Scott. How are you doing today? Yeah, good, thanks. How are you? Great. It's great to have you with us again. It's been a while since we last chatted, so maybe you can refresh a bit of the memories of some of our audience uh, about your company, Blaster Minerals. Yeah, no worries. So we are looking to build a mining and refining business in northern Vietnam. as a previously operated nickel mine called Ban Phuc, and we're looking to produce uh, downstream products for the lithium ion battery. So we're going to look at restarting the mine, and we're also looking to build a refinery, which will take nickel concentrate from the mine and will um, import feedstock as well. And then we'll upgrade it into the chemical products for lithium ion battery, which is called a precursor cathode active material. And it has nickel, cobalt, manganese in the ratio of 811. So it's a, it's a restart of a previously operating mine in Vietnam, but also looking to build a refinery for these chemical products. And we've always said that half of our feedstock will be imported. And we're looking at importing feedstocks from Australia and Canada and then upgrading them into these chemical products in Vietnam, but using the abundant hydro power that we have in the Vietnam region. So that's what's driving a very low CO2 footprint for our product and, and a, a really strong ESG and, and green credentials, So, which is becoming very important for the electric vehicle manufacturers, particularly the premium brands are very focused on ESG and the CO2 footprint of their electric vehicles. So we're, we're, we think um, because of that low CO2 footprint, our product is, is in high demand, um, particularly from European and North American car manufacturers, which are very focused on their branding. We'll talk more about the, the ESG side of things later, but uh, you're becoming a more integrated approach in terms of your business. So let's, let's talk about more some of the updates on recent uh, news. One of the main thing that you announced recently is the uh, option agreement to acquire a major nickel asset in Manitoba, Canada. Can you tell us a bit more about the details and why is it important to your business? Yeah, so it's a very exciting announcement uh, just this week. So we have a 12-month option to acquire the previously operated Bucko mine in in Manitoba. So it's the we're calling it the Waboden project. It has a number of different ore bodies, but it has a very similar history to the mine that we have in Vietnam. It went into care and maintenance when the nickel price was much lower. It had a short history um, between 2009 and 2012, and we're really excited to be able to look at restarting this opportunity in, in Manitoba. And the reason we like Manitoba is it's the same geology as Vietnam. So it's got abundant nickel sulfide, but also we've got the um, renewable power. So we've got 100% hydroelectric power in, in, uh, in the Manitoba region. So we're in the, it's a world-class Thompson nickel belt. It's been operated uh, for over 50 years. So we're hundred kilometers from the town of Thompson and the Thompson Mine, which is currently operated by Vale, we think this is a very underexplored nickel belt. It's the fifth largest nickel sulfide uh, district in the world. And, and we think it's a great place to be because of that hydropower, but the really good geology for um, abundant nickel sulfide. So we can already see 1.3 million tonnes of nickel in, in the resource base, which is two and a half times the amount of nickel that we have in Vietnam. So it, it really increases our resource base, but it becomes our feedstock into the refinery. So 50% of our feed will come from the Vietnam mine, and then 50% would come from this Waboden project in Manitoba. So we've got 12 months uh, of um, this option period, so we can uh, really understand what's the best way to fund this acquisition but also what, it, what can we potentially do with the partnership model as well? So we're looking at a partnership model and we can potentially bring the partners into the Waboden project as well. Yes, and in your materials, I find it's very quite interesting because you always talk about mining green. Can you tell us how you're going to achieve that? Yeah, so it really comes back to the, the ability to... Um, operated at a low CO2 footprint, and that's driven by the renewable power that we have. So we've got abundant renewable power. We're also combining that with electric mining fleet. So we're using a, a fully electric mining fleet in our studies, and we're, we're confident that by the time we're operating that we'll be able to deliver a fully electric mining fleet. So you're combining electric mining fleet with the renewable power, 
But the other benefit is in our, in our downstream process, it's a, it's a hydromet process, which is a much lower CO2 footprint than the conventional pyromet smelting process, which is used for stainless steel. So I've got this, um, this ability to, to produce a very low CO2 footprint, and that's driven by the renewable power combined with the electric mining fleet and that hydromet pressure. It's a pressure oxidation process. So it's a, a low CO2 footprint process that uh, converts our concentrates into these chemical products for the lithium ion battery. So referring to your early comments about looking for a partner, so what kind of partner are you looking for really? Yeah, so we've we've always said that the refinery in Vietnam is a an opportunity to really bring the downstream players into the upstream industry. So we, we're looking at downstream uh, players that are either cathode, battery or car manufacturers, and we're willing to sell down up to 50% of the project. So we're looking at bringing in the partners. They'll bring the a significant amount of funding that's required, but they'll also bring some of the technology and then they'll obviously be interested in the offtake in the final product. So they'll, 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 we're looking at groups that can bring the technology to produce these chemical products, but also larger groups with bigger balance sheets that can bring the funding required and really unlock this business. So we will now look to then um, potentially implement their, their um, partnership into other opportunities like the Woboden project as well. So we will be able to um, show the partners the, this new opportunity in Manitoba and potentially integrate that into the partnership model. So we've got some great opportunities here. We've got a number of different projects that are, are, have a significant uh, resource base of nickel, and we're looking to bring in these downstream partners. These, these groups are already investing tens of billions of dollars into Indonesia. We see ourselves as an alternative to Indonesia and a much cleaner and greener alternative. So we, we see these um, opportunities are driven by the, the demand for clean green nickel that's coming from these uh, electric vehicle manufacturers in, in the US and, and European regions. Be quite interesting. So I also would notice some of your recent uh, news and developments is that Vietnam also approved your recent uh, report, exploration and research report. Is there any potential to, to grow your resources further or expand your targets? Yeah, so we've done a lot of work in Vietnam already. We've defined a 10 year mine life. Uh, we, we believe there's a lot more nickel to be found and we're currently looking in other sort of areas around the northern Vietnam region. And so we are continuing to explore in Vietnam. Um, the, the process takes a little bit longer than, uh, than say, in Canada or Australia to, to secure ground. So it, it is a process where we work in collaboration with the government to secure new areas. And that does take a bit of time. So we think over time we will explore and, and discover a lot more nickel. But unfortunately, the, the process is not as not as easy as, say, in Australia or Canada, where you can can go pegging and, and, and start uh, exploring quickly. So it, it does take a bit of time, but we're confident of the geology in Vietnam. And, and the, we think ultimately Vietnam could feed the 100% the requirement of the refinery. So... Uh, it will take time, but yeah, we're, we're continuing to explore Vietnam, but at the same time, we're exploring these opportunities in, in Canada, uh, in uh, Manitoba as well. Sure. And to wrap up this interview, I'd like to give you a, 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 a pretty important question to, to answer, is that I saw you from the, about two years ago from your peak uh, share price, uh, was a big correction coming down, uh, recent share price as well. And do you have any comments on why does that happen? And do you think your company currently is undervalued? And how do you expect the company to, to rebound and, and look for a better future in next year? Yeah, so it's a great question. There's a couple of reasons for the fall. And one one is the the sentiment towards nickel. And and so there is a, um, uh, uh, there's been a, a real change in sentiment and that's been driven by the supply coming out of Indonesia and then the, the subsequent drop in the nickel price. We're fairly confident the nickel price at these levels is not sustainable. So we, the nickel price will improve and the sentiment will, will come back. The other reason we've um, drifted lower is because of the capital requirement of the project. So there is a large capital requirement, but what we want to show is that we won't, 
be, um, I suppose, diluting at the corporate level. We'll be looking to, to bring in a partner at the asset level. So the idea is that we, once we unlock this partnership, then the then the capital hurdle will be um, um, sh- will be able to show that the capital hurdle is not something to be worried about. So the idea around this partnership model is that we will bring in the capital from a partner, and then we think that is the time when this this um, the the value will be created for the company. So it unfortunately the the fall away has been due to the fact that the joint venture partnership process has taken a little bit longer than we'd expected. The supplier coming out of Indonesia was uh, was probably the main reason for the shift in sentiment. But as we said previously, the green nickel is is very important to these car manufacturers. And so what we're seeing is that 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 ability to produce green nickel is going to attract these partners. And and we're looking to bring those partners in in the coming months and and looking to unlock that value through that partnership model. Scott, thank you for sharing your update with us. Looks like you've come a long way since two years ago, achieved a lot, but uh, you're just currently um, having a, 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 some of the market conditions affecting your stock. But uh, I think looking quite positive, a lot of things to watch for in the coming year. So uh, thank you again for your time with, to share with, with us. Yeah, thanks, Gilbert. Thank you.